FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. I think you'll see at least copycat threats. When I sat there every night with the threat matrix, after every event, that's the matrix U.S. government uses to track, event, to track threats. Yeah, after every event, someone would call in and say, I want to do something like that. What I fear, though, is that people too quickly are going to categorize this as terrorism. This looks more to me like Columbine than it does like Al-Qaeda. Two kids who radicalize between themselves in a closed circle and go out and commit murder. I would charge these guys as murderers, not terrorists. Well, they're not being charged as terrorists. The point is moot. They're not being classified as enemy combatants. They're being, they're being, uh, it's going to, the trial's going to take place in a civilian court. That's interesting, though, because it's the president's former DHS nominee, Philip Mudd. And this was his conversation yesterday on the Sunday morning talk show surrogate with Chris Wallace, uh, saying, I would charge these guys as murderers, not terrorists. For this and all of the discussion on the Saudi student, and there's so much to get into. We need another hour today. Stephen Yates, foreign policy expert with the D.C. International Advisory. You can find him online at dciadvisory.org. Stephen, good afternoon to you. Hi, Dana. Good to be with you. This story is... Oh, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. The FBI has said they're searching for members of a terror cell. We talked last week. You did triple duty last week. We discussed how we really it, it's just impossible to believe that these two individuals acted alone. When you hear the stories, uh, you know, taking into context, uh, you know, here you have two individuals who are unemployed. Uh, the younger one attended an Ivy League school. They drove nice cars. They seemed to be in good health and well-fed, and we have no idea how they were making their money. Um, and then you you hear uh, all of these accusations that, well, it looks like it's part of a sleeper cell. It's starting to seem more and more likely that this is the case. What is your perspective on this? Well, I agree with you that this story keeps growing and growing, and with it I think headaches and questions are growing and growing too. Uh, it really, I think it remains completely implausible in my thinking. I'm bewildered by what that gentleman was saying on television, that these these were just two isolated people. Uh, there's just, I think, very limited uh, analysis to back that kind of a claim up. I mean, he seems to bank on the fact that we haven't had enough public evidence given to us to say there's a connection, but absence of that evidence is not evidence that they were alone. Uh, there's just so much that doesn't add up. Uh, the the fact that they be- went from ordinary Americans, apparently, uh, to experts on IEDs just doesn't happen on your own. Uh, the, the fact that this young man is just apparently on his own would have picked up and gone to Russia undetected and come back undetected and go to the marathon undetected, also very odd and very implausible. So I just think enormous holes remain. Uh, I, I wouldn't be quick. To, to posit my own theory, but I think it'd be incredibly, uh, I think, irresponsible to toss out the idea that these are somehow an isolated group of kids and it's an isolated incident. Right. I, I want to get into the, the discussion of the FBI and DHS and the visas and citizenship and all of that, but there's been a lot of discussion as to whether or not they should be classified as enemy combatants or just try to civilians, which it looks like the administration's going to do. And it kind of got me to wondering, It's the, we, I think we've passed through the looking glass and we are we have, have done that after, it's been a while since that happened, but we're in a new era of warfare. And I'm wondering... You know, you have a lot of experience with this. That you know, these two guys they att- obtained American citizenship. Was that done, in your opinion, as a tactic, as a way to um, somehow prevent us from being able to go whole hog or employ other methods to combat what is seems to be coming now? Uh, not really homegrown terrorism, but terrorism uh, atrocities that are taking place on our own soil. I think that is among the most important issues right now. And frankly, I haven't heard or seen that much analysis of it, but, and it needs to be a part of the current immigration debate. Is it possible that you have cell organizers and network organizers abroad gaming a system where they have used our transparency against us, where we basically say, oh, well, if you're an American citizen, then we cannot surveil people in certain ways. Uh, or you don't have to be a citizen, but if you're a permanent resident, maybe that's okay, where, where we may be gullibly giving them indications about how they can get around 
uh, the protections we tried to put in place post 9-11. Uh, and so I, I actually get very, very bothered by this debate about whether someone is an enemy combatant or otherwise. I mean, if someone is engaged in warfare against American citizens creating mass casualties, I'm a little bit disturbed by wasting a lot of time about what they are right. uh, and get after the information about who are they doing it for and how did this happen and what do we need to do now. Uh, but it's incredibly important to get at this notion of did they look at how to manipulate our system in order to maybe try to use civil liberties to shut down the ability of the FBI and NSA and others to surveil them. And that's, I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. And you're right. We haven't really seen a lot of discussion on that. And it works in their favor. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that you would have individuals who come overseas and try to use uh, the politically, the ever-growing politically correct uh, American judicial system in their favor to gain ground in the United States. Do you think that, I mean, from what you can tell, is anyone actually wondering whether or not this is a tactic? And it is incredibly timely, considering we're debating immigration right now. I've only heard just the beginnings of people talking about, well, this does call into question what we're going to do with immigration reform. And that gets panned immediately as just partisanship and obstructionism and what have you. Uh, but, it, but this incident, if uh, among many of the questions and points it makes, uh, I mean, it just reminds us that immigration is not just about people who come from Mexico. Right. Uh, this is, there, there's a whole wide world out there, and it's very, very important that we don't get it wrong and make it worse. Uh, and uh, and so I, I just think it's a very important reminder. I don't think that it's gotten a lot of deep consideration, frankly. I think we've had lost time dancing on the head of a pin about what rights are going to be read this guy. I have an opinion about that, so do others, but we knew what the administration was going to do, and they are proceeding accordingly. Right. And then you hear this situation with the Saudi national and just all of this, you know, you're talking about dancing on the head of a pin with this. I think that that's the exact way to describe what's happening with this apparent Saudi national who was initially identified as a person of interest. I know Glenn Beck uh, dropped some information earlier this morning, and now there are accusations that his file was changed, that he's somehow connected to this Boston bombing. He's it looks like he may be deported. Uh, no one is discussing this. And it looks like uh, it may be kicked from the Department of Homeland Security to the Department of Justice so that they don't have to discuss it by simply claiming, claiming it's an ongoing investigation. Do you get any sense out of this that there is some sort of cover-up of a larger story? Well, I, you know, I, as we talked about before when this first started rattling around, I get very cautious about what we can really know about, uh, about some of these people. But as Glenn articulated this morning, I mean, there are a lot of data points to what he's raising a lot of uncomfortable data points in what he's raising. Uh, and whether it all ties together into that narrative, uh, really, we do have not had anywhere near the responsiveness from our government, and I dare say we're not going to get it from this current administration, uh, to, to rebut how those points can fit together. Glenn at least puts a plausible uh, narrative there that is uncomfortably close to something that could happen. Uh, there's these issues of identity. There's issues of complete bungling between agencies. Uh, and as we know, I mean, the Justice Department is, is basically the place that has decided not to try terrorists as terrorists. We'll just try them as people who happened to use something we'll call WMD for now. Right. Yeah. He always in possession of a, or he used a weapons of mass destruction. That's one of the things they the complaint, which is now available in this particular case. Uh, you know, you mentioned earlier because there was a lot of discussion about the rights being read to him. Um, how how would this be handled in a, a Republican administration or maybe the better way to ask it is how do you think in your expertise uh, this should have gone down immediately following the arrest? Well, I think that we, you know, I, I have my own views, and I probably am biased more in the side of enabling uh, interrogators, law enforcement, military intelligence to have more fusion and freedom to act in the immediate aftermath of something like this. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I would be more sympathetic to the idea that, especially someone who has only recently become a citizen, they don't deserve the same constitutional protections as those of us who have been born and raised and educated and thrived in a society here. Uh, and, you know, especially if there's a potential question of him having manipulated the system to their advantage. Uh, so, I, you know, and Republican and Democrat is a little less relevant to me in the sense that Republicans had the, the eight years following 
9-11. I don't believe it's it's fair for anyone to think that, that, that the Bush administration got it all right. right. We're clearly having problems now where the whole homeland security and intelligence and investigatory infrastructure has to be questioned. That's happening on the Obama watch. Uh, there are going to be elements of that that are because of the policies they've taken, taking basically trying to define our enemy as only al-Qaeda, when that isn't true. There are radical Islamist networks that are not just al-Qaeda, that are still trying to kill us. Uh, but there will be elements that are just bureaucratic inertia that need to be reviewed. I'd like to believe our elected officials are capable of it, but this is a tall calling. Oh, I know this story. We're going to continue to uh, watch it. And I know we're, we're going to have a, quite a lot to discuss because it is I think they're going to it, it could potentially change how we approach things judicially, at least in the future. Stephen Yates, D.C. International Advisory. Always a pleasure, Stephen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. Right, take care.